the Word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit, and of the joints and the marrow, and is a critic of the thoughts and intents of the heart. All Scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Romans 1, 16 to 17, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, The just shall live by faith. Genesis 15, 6 And he believed in the Lord, and he accounted it for him for righteousness. Isaiah 46, 12 to 13 Listen to me, you stubborn-hearted, who are far from righteousness. I bring my righteousness near. It shall not be far off. My salvation shall not linger, and I will play salvation in Zion for Israel my glory. Romans 9, 30 to 31. What shall we say then? That Gentiles who did not pursue righteousness have attained to righteousness even the righteousness of faith. But Israel, pursuing the law of the righteousness, has not attained to the law of righteousness. Hebrews 11, 7. By faith, Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is according to faith. Psalm 89, 16, In your name they rejoice all day long, and in your righteousness they are exalted. Before we start our Bible study, as usual, it is our custom, may I ask all of you, our subscribers, our followers, our fellow believers, to pause for a moment by putting yourselves in the presence of God. Let us set aside all our problems, worries in life, negative thoughts for the next half hour or so. We need concentration while we assimilate God's truths. But for you, unbeliever, the issue you're facing is your free will. So you can make the most important decision in your entire life, the decision to believe in Christ as your Lord and Savior. Therefore, let us pray. Father, we consider it a privilege to have the freedom and the opportunity of fellowshipping with you and your word. Thank you for taking us this time in this assembly to take in your truths, which we badly need in our spiritual life. We ask all this in Christ's name. Amen. Welcome, everyone, to our daily Bible study. Once again, we are concentrating on the topic, do you want to go to heaven after you die? Okay, we will continue where we stopped yesterday. We uh, explained to you that uh, the worst kind to die is not to die of cancer or um, an accident or through the COVID-19, but 
to die as an unbeliever. That's the worst. But after all, it's a matter of choice. One can choose. Man is always a product of his decision. He is the only one responsible, answerable, and accountable for his decision. Because you see, salvation is a gift to be received, not a goal to be achieved. Now here are conditions without Christ. Like the following description, a person is about to drown. He needs some or someone to rescue him, like throwing him a life jacket. Or a person who is sick and needs medicine to cure him, or else he will die. Or a person who pours gasoline on a bathtub and lights it up and then dive into it. God has already prepared a funeral plan for unbelievers. God says, it would have been better for this man not to have been born at all. That's what our Lord Jesus Christ said to Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples who betrayed him, who was an unbeliever. Or a person who believes since his birth that black is white. And when he is told the truth, that the black he used to believe is white, is not white, but black, and he won't believe it. You see, man desperately needs God. God does not need man. Now, how did the Old Testament people get saved? By looking forward to the cross by faith. And how do we, New Testament people, get saved? Also, by looking backward to the cross by faith. Now, every believer today is the church. Ecclesia is the Greek word for church. And how does one enter the church? Answer by means of spirit baptism. That's in Acts 1.5. What's the mechanism? Faith alone in Christ alone. Acts 16.31. Faith on the right object. Who is the right object? The Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ is the only Savior and Lord. The Christ in the Bible is the only Savior, not the Christ in religion. You see, the Christ in religion does not save anyone. Do you know why? Because religion considers their Christ to be lower than Mary. They say, ad yesum pra Mariam, to Jesus through Mary. Religion, particularly the Roman Catholic Church, says, you cannot come to Jesus without passing through Mary. You have got to be approved by, by Mary first before going to Jesus. That is false doctrine. And it was Satan himself, the father and founder of religion, who made it up. The Bible does not say so. That is the reason why the worst thing that could happen to any member of the human race is to believe what religion teaches. Because what religion teaches are lies, the lies of Satan. You see, religion is Satan's own making of a pseudo-Christianity. Christianity is a relationship with God through faith in Christ, the Christ in the Bible. There is no other mediator between God and man, only the Lord Jesus Christ. Acts 4.12, 1 Timothy 2.5. Actually, one cannot believe something he does not know, right? Now, people who are negative to learning the truth in the Word of God cannot believe and apply any biblical doctrine they do not know. Therefore, he has got to hear the gospel first through an evangelist or minister before believing it. God's word says, Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Romans 10, 17. You see, salvation is part of the plan of God. The plan of God does not fail. It works perfectly well 
in every member of the human race. In fact, the plan of God runs every individual person's life. No one can escape. I repeat, no one can escape from it, whether we like it or not. You see, there are three major kinds or groups of people in this world, namely natural, they are the unbelievers, second, spiritual, believers, mature spiritually, and the third, carnal, believers who are not growing spiritually. Now look at yourself and find out where you belong in the three groups listed. However, at this point, let us take up five points on the doctrine of heathenism. Now, number one, God is righteous, plus R, and just, meaning perfect justice. Therefore, God can never be unfair to any member of the human race. That's in Deuteronomy 32, verse 4. Number two, the ultimate redemptive, redemptive work of Christ provided salvation to the entire human race. That is in 2 Corinthians 5, 14. And number three, the declared will of God says that all be saved. Now, you should remember the seven declared wills of God. That is found in 1 Timothy 2, 4 and 2 Peter 3, 9. Number four, whenever a member of the human race has a desire to know who and what God is, meaning positive volition toward God consciousness, God is going to send gospel message to that positive individual. John 7:17 7, and Jeremiah 29:13. Number five, when an unbeliever has a negative volition towards God consciousness, God is under no obligation to send gospel information to that negative individual. Results, self-induced misery, divinely imputed misery. You see, there are two ways to enter heaven. Number one, to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior. Number two, to die prior to reaching God consciousness. A person who believes in Christ has the right to become a child of God, John 1, 12. Believers are sons of God through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, Galatians 3, 26. Now, how much faith is needed to believe in Christ? The answer is just as small as a mustard seed. That kind of faith that is non-meritorious, a childlike faith, the third kind of human perception. Again, what are the two worst ways to die? Number one, to die is an unbeliever. Luke 16, 23. Number two, to die the S-U-D, sin unto death, as a believer. Now get this point of doctrine. A person who receives a gift but throws that same gift right towards the giver's face, meaning to reject it, is like insulting God's gift, rejecting God's gift of salvation. God says in His Word that we can know beyond any doubt that we are on our way to heaven, 1 John 5, 13. And He has told us why. Number one, the requirements for heaven have been met for us by the Lord Jesus Christ. And number two, the way to heaven is not by works, but by faith. Ephesians 2, 8 to 9. So believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Acts 16, 31. I tell you the truth. He who believes has everlasting life. John 4, or John 6, 47. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, 
But whoever does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. John 3.18 He who believes in the Son has life, eternal life. And he who, does, who rejects the Son will not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. John 3.36 So, the question is this how do you know for sure you have indeed become a child of God now I often ask anybody whenever God gives me an opportunity this question how did you become a Christian now if I were to pose the same question to you how would you respond could you provide a clear biblical answer Perhaps it's time for you to make sure you understand the basics of salvation. Not so you can answer a reporter's question, but so you can know for sure that you have indeed become a child of God. So ask yourself the following questions. Have I recognized that I have committed sin against God? Romans 3.23 says we have all sinned and have fallen short of God's perfect standard. It is because of our sin that salvation is so vital. We need to be forgiven. And number two, have I acknowledged that Christ died on the cross to pay the penalty for my sin? And have I acknowledged and believed in Him, Jesus Christ, as my personal Savior, Romans 10, 9 to 10. Salvation is not a matter of trying to live like Jesus or believing that He was a good man. It is accepting as a gift what He did at the cross for us. Number three, do I desire to live in a way that pleases Christ? This gives evidence that our faith in Him is genuine. 1 John 2, 3 to 6. So do you know you are saved? It's the most important question you will ever answer. Here is, or here are words to live by. To get to heaven, it is who you know that counts. So you read the verses, Ephesians 1, 3 to 14, 1 Peter 3.15 Therefore, do not forget to be with us tomorrow as we continue our discussion on other doctrines related to our subject. Let us pray. My friend, should you die right at this very moment, do you know for sure you will live forever for eternity in heaven? or in hell. You see, the Bible, the Word of God tells us that you can know it for sure. I am asking you, friend, this question, since this is the most important question you will ever encounter in your entire life. Let me ask you this. Are you saved? It's not a question of whether you are a member of a church or not, but are you saved? It is not a question of whether you are living a decent, respectable, and honorable life, but are you saved? The Bible says we all need to be saved. My friend, for you to get saved, first of all, you have got to acknowledge the fact that you are a sinner. The Word of God says in Romans 3, 10 to 12, there is none righteous, not even one. There is none who understands. There is none who seeks for God. All have turned aside. Together they have become useless. There is none who does good. There is not even one. Also in Romans 3.23, God's word says, All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Friend, it's because of your sins that you have come short of the glory of God. And that is the reason why 
you will never be able to meet the necessary requirements for you to be saved. Secondly, you must realize that someone loves you, who in fact died for you. And he is the Lord Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for the purpose of paying for your sins, and who gave you the opportunity to get saved and be in heaven after you die. Romans 5, 8 says, But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. When our Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross, it was his spiritual death that paid the penalty of our sins. Colossians 1, 14 says, In whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. My friend, listen to this. You cannot do anything to ask for help to get saved. The truth is, the Lord Jesus Christ has already paid it in full while he died on the cross. Before he died, he uttered the words, Tetelestai, it is finished. That is in John 19, 30. Now, he wants to give you a home in heaven. A home. The gift of God which is life without end. And this can only be found in our Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 6, 23. My friend, listen to this. When Jesus saves you, it is eternal. It is forever. He did not remain dead. He rose from the grave, and today he is alive. And now he is seated at the right hand of God the Father, interceding for all those who put their trust in him. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4 says, For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. Hebrews 7.25 delineates, Therefore, he is able also to save forever those who draw near to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. So by faith, accept the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus died in order for him to give eternal life to all those who believe in him. However, like any gift, that gift, if not accepted, would be of no use. Yes, my friend, I just call you friend this time because you are yet an unbeliever. My friend, the Bible says you can be saved by faith alone in Jesus Christ alone. And there is no other means. And you cannot add anything to it. None. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, We have been saved by grace through faith. That not of yourselves, it's a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Listen, the only faith that can save you is your total trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. So believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this time you have given us to study your precious word today. Bring us tomorrow once again to this gathering so we can continue assimilating your doctrine, so we will know your unfailing love, so we also can keep our faith in you and your word ever burning, of course, with a boiling hot attitude towards you and your doctrines, which is second to none. Thank you for this. We ask all this in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.